Okay, so this is the outline of chapter 33. Okay, so we will first introduce uh, what is e electromagnetic wave. And then uh, I will also talk about the, the energy transfer and also the pointing vector. And later we'll talk about something related to the radiation pressure. And so this is a kind of uh, property of the, of, the, of the particle, property of the particle. And then we'll talk about the polarization, refraction, refraction, total internal refraction, polarization of refraction. Probably you might have learned these three in high school physics, which is something like the uh, optics, the optic things. Uh, and yeah, actually, for the pro up to uh, starting from the polarization, it is some property about the wave. So it try to let you know um, what is the duality, uh, duality, duality. Uh, uh, in Chinese, poly er xiangxing. Which means that uh, the light has the property of the particle and also that has the property of the wave. And actually, uh, yeah, we'll not go deep into uh, chapter 37, chapter 38, uh, 38 this semester, but yeah, if you have interest, you can just check it on my YouTube channel. But yeah, actually, it not only the not only the light, not only the EM wave has this kind of uh, property. Also, particles has the property of wave, uh, which is known as the uh, matter wave. Uh, matter wave, Wu Zibo, Wu Zibo. So yeah, if you're interested, you can check it on uh, chapter thirty-eight. Maybe if, if I have some time remaining, I can just go through quickly uh, what it is about. But yeah, actually the mathematics is quite complicated in my opinion. Okay, so yeah, so when we talk about the EM wave, we talk about how it generates. So it's just a joke. So it is from the Genesis, from the Bible, which is the very beginning book of the, of the Bible. And of course, in the Old Testament, and yeah, so this is the Genesis, of, uh, the first chapter, first to third, and this is the uh, NIV version, the New International Version, uh, uh, NIV. I, I'm not sure, <laughs> but uh, actually, I I only remember how to read it in uh, in Cantonese. It's like. Okay. So um so this tells you how how the god generate the, 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 the EM wave, uh, generate the EMA. And actually it's very at the very very beginning. So it's like uh, at the beginning. God created the heaven and earth. Yeah, before before God create anything, there is already some some water. So it says, um, now the earth was uh, formless and empty. Darkness was over the, the deep and the spirit was God hovering over the waters. So the God doesn't really need to create the waters. Uh, there is already waters uh, before he uh, create anything. And then he, he said, uh, and actually the light is the first thing uh, that God create. So it says, uh, let there be light and there was light. And this is the first date. And yes, according to the Bible, uh, God created the, the, the world uh, in, in six days, and then the seventh day is, the, is for rest. Okay. So after the joke, we talk about some uh, scientific stuff. Okay, so here we talk about the Maxwell wearing bow. I suppose I, I have shown something similar in. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure in, in, in which chapter, maybe in chapter 21, I'm not sure, really sure. But yeah, I, actually we can uh, try to uh, talk about it uh, more detailly now. So here it says uh, in Maxwell's time, uh, around mid-19th uh, mid, uh, century, 19th century. Okay, so for the Maxwell equation, actually he Unified the Maxwell equation in uh, 1855, 
and then his uh, yeah. So it says uh, the visible infrared and ultraviolet forms of light were the only uh, electromagnetic wave. And of course, uh, according to the Maxwell equation, E can really solve for the uh, solve for uh, yeah. So it's from the Maxwell equation. He can really derive the wave equation. The wave equation. I will let you know how how we can derive the wave wave equation from the Maxwell equation, and then we try to solve this solve, uh, wave equation. And the solution is actually the EM wave. So at that time, uh, at this moment, uh, the they they consider the only man EM wave are the visible infrared and ultraviolet. So, 可见光, uh, 红外线跟紫外线, uh, okay, so, so it is like uh, somewhere here. So this is the visible light. And of course, in, in kindergarten or, or primary school, you know the, the rainbow. So it's from red to, to violet, uh, to violet. So, yeah. And then you can see here the, yes, so this is the wavelength. The red line has the longest wavelength and the violet has the shortest wavelength. And of course, uh, for even shorter, uh, for human being, we cannot uh, see this uh, ultraviolet uh, uh, wave. And also for this part, uh, it is the infrared. For even longer wavelength, this is the infrared. Uh, okay, so actually for human, human eyes, we cannot really see see these two kind of uh, of waves but actually for for that time the scientists uh, already know uh, the existence of the infrared and also the ultraviolet okay so out of that uh, they don't they don't know too much and actually actually when we try to go to the right side the right side uh, so this side is the frequency this side is the wavelength so as much as you know um, there will be equation like uh, c equals f lambda c equals f lambda or v equals f lambda or v equals so for a wave this is the the speed of the wave and then this is the frequency this is the wavelength so the frequency and the wavelength are inversely proportional to each other so which means that we have a longer wave longer wavelength than the uh, i mean i mean the highest frequency then you have a shorter wavelength and if you have a low frequency you have a uh, 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 longer wavelength, long wavelength. So in this figure, uh, the left side is uh, is the longest wavelength and a low frequency, and this side is a short uh, short wavelength and a high frequency. So on the right side, uh, we have ultraviolet and also we have X ray, gamma ray, and then so this is high frequency, high frequency. And actually, maybe in high school physics, you also know uh, one of the well-known equation is the E equals HF, HF, or some textbook it may write it as a H nu. So F and nu both uh, refer to the frequency of the of the EM wave. So this means that this is the energy of a photon, the energy of a photon. So it means that if the frequency is higher, the energy is also higher. So you can see here, this is the high energy part. So you can also consider the the, sing, the, the energy for a single photon of this kind of wave uh, has high energy. So the ultraviolet, you, yeah. So for, for ladies, you probably need to uh, wear a converter for uh, when they are sunshine. And actually, um, yeah, so, Actually, the ultraviolet is also not so good for for for, for normal person. So yeah, it may induce a higher probability to have a skin cancer, something like that. And also X-ray, 
yeah, usually we, we know the x-ray when we need to uh, to take the x-ray for yeah, maybe some yeah, uh, entering uh, uh, the university you, you probably need to take the x-ray or you can see uh, the, the, the lung the inside uh, tissue whether it's uh, health or not and even higher uh, particle high energy particle is the uh, gamma ray so this is the high energy part high energy part for the lower energy part uh, it might be uh, more familiar to us yes yeah, so so you can see here so the outer uh, for the visible light the frequency is like uh, 10 to the 14 or nearly 10 to the 15 and yeah so actually uh and here this is 10 to the ninth 10 to the ninth is the giga uh, gigahertz uh, gigahertz and then 10 to the 12 10 to the 12 if you're familiar with a computer you know uh, this is terahertz uh, because uh, you probably need to buy a, a hard disk or external drive then uh, it is like a terra, terra, uh, terabyte or, or whatever so this is terahertz or even i'm not really sure it is pattern or what yeah maybe it's pattern okay so here this is the frequency we are usually using just like uh, here will be the gsm gsm then or you can we can call it a uh, uh, ultra high frequency, ultra high frequency. Uh, you don't ne necessarily need to remember all those. Just, uh, just regard it as sorry because, yeah, my my research topic in my PhD study is uh, about the wireless uh, communication. So I can just tell you a bit about that. So the GSM is something like the two uh, G, the two G. 2G communication and of course we are, we are now using uh, 3G, 4G or, or even 5G or, or, although um, there's no 5G in, in Macau yet <laughs> even though you, you buy the 5G smartphone but you cannot use 5G in Macau yet okay so for this this part of frequency uh, like uh, hundreds of uh, megahertz hundreds of megahertz so it's generally used for a 2G, a 3G, or even 4G. Or maybe for here, maybe for one time something, or maybe one time a gigahertz band, also used for a 4G, or maybe even two point something gigahertz. And for Wi-Fi, for Wi-Fi, we are actually using a 2.45 gigahertz for the Wi-Fi, uh, for the Wi-Fi and also 5 gigahertz 5 gigahertz 5 gigahertz also for the for the wi-fi uh, yeah, uh, actually there are a bit old standard uh, maybe now we are also using some uh, tens of gigahertz uh, frequency yeah but actually uh, the most standard uh, uh, band for the wi-fi is uh, for for 2.45 gigahertz and also 5 gigahertz and uh, and of course uh, recently we are uh, we, we recently uh, heard about the 5 5g communication 5g 5g which is this one refer to the fifth generation fifth generation this is 5 gigahertz 5 gigahertz but usually the router only Wi 5g because that uh, 5G XZ is uh, yeah a, a bit too long, so you need to distinguish. Uh, 5 gigahertz and 5G are different. 5G is the fifth generation for the for the communication, uh, and then this 5 gigahertz is only a frequency band, uh, frequency band, and of course uh, the 5 gigahertz is higher frequency. So the bandwidth can also be higher, and with more bandwidth, you can probably transfer more data in a, in a unit of time. So, so yeah. So just in case you can you can see the router, you can you can have a line of sight with it. 
then probably you use a 5 gigahertz band will be better. But for 2.45 gigahertz, uh, yeah, the attenuation of the EM wave is uh, is smaller, so that it can transfer for longer distance. So if if you cannot see the the router, but yeah, and maybe you can detect the both the 2.45 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. If you cannot see the direct uh, the router directly, then probably the 5 gigahertz the, the signal strength of the 5 gigahertz uh, band might be maybe weak. Then if you insist on you using that then then the transfer uh, quality might, might not be good so yeah it depends on whether you can really see the, the router and for 5 gigahertz they probably use something like the 30 gigahertz band 30 gigahertz band and sometimes we refer it as the millimeter wave uh, millimeter wave so you can slightly see here, 30 gigahertz is somewhere here, 30 gigahertz. Okay, so you can see here, it's around uh, 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 2 or even, or even here. So this is, this wavelength is 10 to the third, 10 to the minus third, 10 to the minus third, this is millimeter, this is uh, millimeter. So this is uh, roughly close to the millimeter scale. So we sometimes refer it as the millimeter wave. Millimeter wave. And yeah, so this is so-called a radio wave, or maybe you listen to the radio, maybe the yeah the Macau radio, like uh, 100.7 100 megahertz, uh, mega megahertz. For the for the Macau radio, so which is around around here, around here, okay. So these are generally used for uh, wireless communication. Wireless communication. Actually, the the signal itself is not so so high frequency, but we try to use a so called a carrier wave, carrier wave, uh, or carrier frequency to to carry the baseband signal so that it can go for longer distance. Just say uh, for for our voice, uh, the, the, the frequency can be as low as uh, several, hun uh, several hundreds of hertz or maybe, or maybe probably less than a few kilohertz. So for human voice, human voice this is around here, human voice. voice is around here so you can simply imagine that if you really shout very loud then your voice can go in a very long distance so you, we probably need a higher uh, higher carrier frequency somewhere around here so that it can carry some information and then it can go for long distance and then yeah Okay, so it also mentioned that here, oh, this is a uh, maritime aeronautic news. Oh, so this is a uh, AM radio, AM radio, and then also uh, FM radio or mobile radio. And then here we have a TV channel, TV channel, tens of megahertz, tens of megahertz to uh, several hundred megahertz, something like the ultra, ultra high frequency. And then here is for for the wireless the wireless communication like uh, uh, long distance long distance like the two G three G four G five G and also the Wi Fi uh, regional uh, uh, regional is is like the two G three G and yeah so for wireless local local area network so it's for the Wi Fi okay so here it says. The spurs on the Maxwell works are, however, uh, uh, hertz, this guy, hertz. So the SI unit for the frequency is named after him. This is hertz. Discover uh, what we now call radio wave and verify that they move through the lab, uh, the lab at the same speed as uh, visible light. 
visible light, which means the speed of light indicate that they have the same basic nature as a visible light. Uh, so they yeah, move at the same speed, which is known as the fastest speed uh, in the world. Uh, yeah, so we now know a wide spectrum of uh, electromagnetic wave, so-called the Maxwell rainbow, so which includes the whole thing. So just the name, because uh, in, for primary study, you for primary students, you know uh, the rainbow is, is this one, uh, from red to, to violet. But actually the whole thing, or the EM, uh, for different frequency of the uh, EM wave, we call it the Maxwell rainbow. Okay, so here we talk about uh, how to generate the EM wave. So, it, of course, this is just a simplified model. Uh, actually, uh, it will be much complicated, but yeah, just a, just a demonstration. So here, assume we have some energy, so, uh, energy source. So we provide some energy to this uh, LC oscillator, LC oscillator. So this R is just a uh, model because uh, there must be some resistance over the whole loop. So we have uh, our LC, but it assumed that it is just a uh, LC oscillator. But if you still remember what we have learned in uh, chapter 31, if there are some resistance, it will really influence the, uh, the natural frequency, slightly reduce the, the natural frequency from uh, one over square root of LC to a slightly lower value. But if R is small enough, then it will be fine. Okay, so here, suppose we provide some energy. This uh, LC oscillator will provide a, a frequency. So this F is uh, approximately uh, one over square root of LC. Okay, so this is a transformer. So this uh, frequency will transfer to the second coil. Second coil, so through a transmission line, and then this is an antenna. This is the antenna. And then as a electric dipole antenna, electric dipole antenna. So this is a one of the pole, this is another pole. Okay, so yeah, so this is one of the pole, this is another pole. And as much as uh, this EM, uh, this, this uh, voltage signal or the potential, electric potential is changing because it is an oscillator. <coughs> So there will be some current going through. There will be some current going through. There will be some current going through. And also there will be some current. There will be some current. Actually going up down because uh, it's a sinusoidal wave. It's a sinusoidal wave. But of course, when we, we need to uh, use for communication, it won't be a single frequency sinusoidal. It, it will be a quite a wide bandwidth. But yeah, just. Yeah. So, but just for demonstration, this is a this is just a single frequency uh, oscillator here. So, but at least even for single single frequency, uh, this current is going up and down like a sinusoidal wave, like a sinusoidal wave. And here, as much as we have some <coughs> current, which is time varying. And according to the Maxwell equation, it will generate some E field and B field. And then this E field and B field are also time varying, uh, goes also going up and down. And for time varying, a B field will generate E field according to the uh, Faraday's law. And, and if we have a time varying E field, it will generate uh, B field, time varying B field also. So in that case, it will generate EM wave and then it will start to transfer to uh, to long distance, uh, and if it is if it is a uh, free space, uh, if it is free space, which means that it can be just uh, air or or vacuum, or vacuum, vacuum, then ideally the the EM wave can propagate for infinitely long. It won't be uh, attenuated. Okay, so suppose uh, we have a distance point P, we can really detect the E field, B field at this point. 
Okay, so we can really sense the generation of the EM wave. And here you can see this is so called the wave front. Wave front. Which means that uh, starting from, from the antenna, it tried to generate <coughs> the wave. And then, for example, after time uh, delta t, this wave front come to here, and then for another delta t, it go to here, go to here, go to here. So it just like uh, you just like uh, go to the lake, you throw a stone into the into the lake, then you can see the wave propagating. Okay, something like that. Okay, so an LC oscillator produces a sinusoidal current in the antenna, which generate a wave, and P is the distant point at the, uh, at which a detector can monitor the wave traveling past it. Okay, so here we also talk about, uh, yeah, so, so here is just some observation in the textbook. It's just try to explain it in a very simple way, very layman way to, yeah, to explain uh, what it is. So it says, uh, due to the observation at this point P, you can see that. So suppose this is the point P and then you, you are just uh, looking in in this side, looking to the left side or the or the right side. It, it doesn't really matter. So if if you consider you try to looking to the left side, which means that you're looking at the antenna. Okay. So in this case, you can see at this at the first at the first moment, uh, the E field point to the left side. The uh, oh, sorry, the E field point to uh, pointing upward, and the B field pointing to the left side. And then sometimes later, sometimes later, you can see the E view pointing upward, B view pointing to the left side. Oh, so the direction is the same, but they are, um, yeah, the, the amplitude reduced proportionally. So these two triangles are similar triangle. And then sometimes later, uh, the E view and B view uh, reduced to zero. And then sometimes later it becomes uh, e view pointing downward and then B view point to the right side. So and then and then sometimes later and then E view pointing downward and then B view point to the right side and then the amplitude is maximized and then going back becomes smaller zero and then pointing positive direction and then going back to here and then it will just uh, increase and decrease back and forth uh, for it infinite amount of time uh, or maybe just up to uh, whether you still uh, putting energy into here so that it, it can uh, generate the EM wave as much as you want okay so here it says the EM wave the, e, uh, the electric field and the magnetic field change with time as one wavelength of the wave uh, swift past the distance point P and the wave is traveling directly out of the page, directly out of the page, we chose, yeah, so which means that you actually seeing to the left side, you actually seeing to the left side, which means that uh, this, for this figure, the, the, the EM wave is pointing out of the page, is propagating out of the page, propagating out of the page. Okay, so, Later on, I will t t let you know that oh, this is also related to the right-hand rule. This is also related to the right-hand rule. You can just uh, consider. Oh, sorry, you can just consider the direction. Uh, e E view cross B view is the direction of the of the EM wave. Okay, so yeah, directly uh, direct out of the page. So we choose a distant point so that the curvature of the wave is small enough to, to ne neglect to neglect. It means that if you choose a point very close, so you can see this is just like a spherical, the concentric spherical. But if you choose a point very, very far away, then the the radius, the radius from here to here is uh, out, is uh, tends to infinity. Then you can consider the sphere and then you just cut apart 
then it is just sim uh, similar to a plane, uh, similar to a plane, similar to a plane, and then and then we will just approximate it as a plane wave, plane wave, in Chinese call a uh, ping mian po, uh, ping mian, ping mian po, uh, plane wave. So we we need to assume that the out tends to the out from here to here tends to infinity. Yeah, to from here to here tends to infinity. Then then if you just cut a small region, then it is just like a plane. Okay. So at such point, the wave is said to be a plane wave, and discussion of the wave is much simpler. So if you we really talk about the the near field EM wave, then yeah, the, the, the mathematics will be much uh, complicated. Okay, so here are some other observations. So here it says the first one, the E, the electric and magnetic field E and B are always perpendicular to each other to the direction in which the wave is traveling. So yeah, so very trivial so they are they are just perpendicular to each other and then the second point is that the E field is always perpendicular to the to the magnetic field uh, oh, oh sorry uh, the first point is that uh, the E field and, and B field are always perpendicular to the direction of the way it's traveling which means that uh, T uh, the second point is uh, E is perpendicular uh, to B. So this is uh, E is perpendicular to B. And then here, suppose this one, we later on we will call it S, what is, which, which means the pointing vector. The point, uh, pointing, pointing vector. Yeah, we will see it uh, a few pages later. So this is so-called the pointing vector. So for the first point, it, it says that uh, E is perpendicular to the pointing vector. B view is also perpendicular to the pointing vector. And then for the first, for the third, third point, it says the cross product E cross B always gives the direction in which the wave uh, travels. The wave travels. So which means that the pointing vector is. Uh, parallel to uh, E cross B E cross B so you can see here uh, the E field the E field pointing upward B field pointing to the left side so you use your finger point to the E field and then you cross to B field and then the thumb pointing out of the page and then for example for this case E view pointing downwards and then B view point to the right side. So you use your right hand rule and then your thumb also pointing to the out of the page. So yeah, so here we have a S pointing out of the page. So this is the third point. Okay. So S is a parallel to E cross B. And then the fourth point, the field always varies sinusoidally. Uh, moreover, the wheel, uh, the the field varies uh, with the same frequency and in phase with each other. Yeah, so they are varying like a, a sinusoidal, a single sinusoidal, and then they have the same frequency, and then with the same phase, which means that suppose this is the positive of a positive direction of the E field, this is the positive direction of the B field. So at this point, E field and B field are maximized, pointing to these two directions, and then they decrease uh, proportionally, and then they become zero at the same time. And then they point to the opposite direction, uh, and then become the maximized, pointing to the opposite direction at the same time. And then reduce, and then become zero at the same time, and then going back to here. So, which means that uh, they're very, always varying sinusoidally and then with the same frequency and in phase with each other. Okay, so here it says, uh, according to this uh, observation, uh, it can, uh, uh, we can 
really uh, conclude that. Uh, we can really conclude that. So in keeping this uh, feature, we can deduce that uh, uh, EM wave traveling along an x-axis can uh, has an E field and B field with magnitude that depends on x and t. X and t. So suppose uh, this direction is x direction, x direction, pointing out of the page. And then the E field, the E field and the B field can be written like this. Uh, e m times sine of k x omega t, and then B equals B m times sine k x minus omega t. Okay, so yeah, so so as as I mentioned, you try to accept uh, why it will be like this. I will try to explain how we can find the solution by solving the wave equation uh, after finishing the, the slides of this chapter. Okay, so here we have this uh, sinusoidal, sinusoidal, so you can feel free to use a sine or cosine, I, I think. I think for, for, for most of the cases, sine or cosine doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, so, but yeah, in this textbook, it's just use sine, so you can just follow it and here we have we have some variable uh, omega t uh, i think you should be familiar with it omega is the angular frequency the t is the time here x is the displacement so nothing special so the only things uh only new things is that uh, this k this k is called the wave uh, wave number uh, wave number okay uh, is called a wave number case is called the wave number and and so one point i can tell you is that inside the side inside the side this term should have no dimension should have no dimension and then omega is the uh, radian per second for for o, for omega is a radian per second and then t is hertz hertz is simply like uh, one over s so S and S can be cancelled. Radian is not a unit. So this is just a radian. And then here, Kx, X is a displacement. So the SI unit for X is a meter. So the for the wavelength, uh, I mean for the for the wave number, the SI unit should be uh, one over meter or meter to the negative one power. Okay, so this is the wave number. Okay, and then and then here we have a a equation like uh, k equals two pi over lambda. K equals two pi over lambda. Lambda is the wavelength. Lambda, lambda is the wavelength. Okay. And then uh, if you still remember, we have uh, something like a c. Uh, sorry, c equals c equals f lambda c equals f lambda and then we can try to write it like uh, 2 pi f equals lambda over 2 pi so this is like this one is uh, omega this one is omega this is k this is 1 over k because k is 2 pi over lambda so lambda over 2 pi is uh, 1 over k so we have an expression like this. Okay, so maybe we can finish this page uh, today. Uh, so here it says the wave speed, the wave speed, uh, the speed of the wave is uh, omega over k, omega over k. So you can imagine here, this is sine. Uh, maybe I just write it here. Sine of uh, 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 sorry, k x minus omega t. K x minus omega t. Okay. And then uh, actually we can just forgot this this one this thing because uh, it's just a multiply to here. So actually we can consider we can consider when kx 
minus omega t is uh, zero. We, we, we can just try to make it a constant or, or make it a constant phase. Maybe make it zero is uh, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a trivial, it's a trivial case. Okay, so first of all, when t is zero, then you can simply solve uh, x to be zero. X to be zero, because uh, you just put t to be zero here, so this time to be zero. And then k is a non-zero number, so we have uh, x equals to zero. Okay, so so after some time, after some time, you can also consider. So suppose t equals uh, capital T, and then now x will be will become uh, omega t over over k, omega t over k, and then so this is sometimes later, this point move to this uh, displacement which means that the velocity, the velocity will be like uh, x over delta t, uh, capital T, which is omega over k. So it's just something like this, something like this. So we, this is the speed of the wave. And then however, because this is an electromagnetic wave, its speed is given by the symbol rather than using the v as the velocity. So we wish, yeah, because the speed of light, uh, we should give some respect to the speed of light. So we name it as C rather than V. And then this C is oh, very interesting. It is related to the epsilon naught and also the mu naught. And the expression is like a one over square root of mu naught epsilon naught. And of course, I, I will let you know why it will be like that. And of course, this value is like uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second or more precisely it is like uh, 2.998 uh, times, uh, times 10 to the 8th power meter per second for relativity or, or some other uh, calculation yeah if you're interested uh, it is like uh, 2.99 uh, uh, Two nine nine seven uh, nine two four five eight uh, meter per second. Uh, you can just check it on the Wikipedia if you don't believe. <laughs> okay, so this is the speed of light up to nine digit, uh, nine significant digit. Okay, so yeah, and I will let you know why it will be related to to this one actually. You can simply imagine that uh, we have the Maxwell equation. In the Maxwell equation, we have a uh, mu naught epsilon naught, and then the Maxwell equation can derive the we can we can derive the wave equation from the Maxwell equation. So the wave equation also consists of the uh, this factor like uh, c square. And then after the solution, uh, it is something like uh, if you have if you have a uh, yeah, actually, the, the wave equation is something like this. It's something like this. Uh, minus uh, equals uh, uh, partial E, partial T, something like this, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, so it's like a second order uh, differential equation. And then, yeah, so you can imagine uh, after solving this one, uh, we have a, oops, oh, we have a 1 over C squared here. So we have a C. We have a C or something like this, or, or actually, which is like a mu zero epsilon not a partial E, something like this. Okay, so yeah, so so this is quite trivial. I think it's quite trivial. I I will let you know uh, after finishing this uh, the slides of this chapter. Okay, so all all EM wave, including the visible light, uh, have the same speed C in the vacuum. Okay, maybe less stop here today uh, AP.